A common technique for making a video more interesting is to add motion. This is particularly true with still images such as a title or a photograph. If you take a look in my particular piece here in the timeline, you'll see that I have a number of photographs. I want to make some changes to these. Well, one of the changes I want to first start off with in making, and this is not related to motion, uh, but you will see that it has a similar look, is to take and make this image fill the frame. Currently, it's not. You can see the black bars on either side. So if I take, and with this clip selected, come up and double click on the image up in the program monitor, I will get this transform box around it. I can go ahead and take and drag this to whatever size I want, now filling that frame. If I wanted to, I could also reposition it. Now, those changes have been applied to that entire clip and crossed its in entirety. What I want to do with motion, with those effects, is to apply these changes, but at a particular point in the duration of this clip. Let me show you what I mean. So again, I have my playback head over my clip. I've got the clip selected. I can view the clip in my program monitor. I also now need to bring up the effect controls. Here's where we have controls over our different effects. And relating primarily to our motion, opacity, and time remapping. So let's say that I want my clip to start out just as it is. So I'm going to move my playback head to the very beginning of this clip. I need to enable the uh, effect, so I need to click on this little transformation box that's to the left of the word motion. And you'll see I get an identical transformation box that I had earlier. But I also want it to record this at this particular point in the clip. I need a keyframe there. So if I come over, when I'm working with this position, so I'm going to click on this little stopwatch that's to the left of the word position. And I get this little half of a diamond, this little triangle. That's a keyframe. If I now take my playback head, move it to some other position, and click on this little diamond, this will add another keyframe. You can now see the full diamond. I could go ahead and take this clip and move it to some other position. That position is being recorded right here on this keyframe. So the position at this keyframe is different than the position at this point. So when I scrub across here, you'll see that I now have movement of my clip. If I were to play it in my timeline, I would also see that there's movement. So there's no real difference between controlling the playback head here or here, other than this is specific to just that one clip. If I don't like the position of that keyframe, I can click and drag it to some new location. I can add additional keyframes by simply positioning my playback head and clicking on the little diamond. I can move from keyframe to keyframe very quickly and easily using the little arrows or triangles to the left or to the right. I can remove a keyframe by positioning over top of it and clicking on the same little diamond that I used to add. You can see in the little context sensitive pop up there it says add remove keyframe and that will remove the keyframe. So I have a lot of control over these particular keyframes. I can have as many as I want. Each one could have a different property or different setting. In this case, all relating to position because that's the property level or channel that I'm on. But I can also make changes to the scale. So let's say at this particular point, I want to make a change to the size of this image. Well, I would need to activate this particular um, property, the scale. So I'm going to click on that little stopwatch. You'll see that I get a keyframe on that particular property level. And I'll leave it at this, but then maybe up to the very end of that clip, I want to change it. So I need a keyframe at the end. So since we're dealing with a scaling property, I can click and hold and drag that, in this case, just slightly larger. So now, from the beginning, I'd get a little bit of movement. I can then just get a change in scale as well. And that's the same whether I play it on my main timeline or I play it in the timeline that's associated with the effect controls. So there you have it. This is how you create some basic motion using Adobe Premiere.